because he was much instructed in Judaism. <coughs> Last time I did tell you that Apostle Paul was a descendant of Benjamin, so he was a Benjaminite. When we talk about the Benjaminites, you know the 12 sons of Jacob, and the last one was Benjamin, who was the brother of Joseph. Both of them had one mother, hallelujah, whose name you know was Rachel. Therefore, let us go into the, <coughs> the message proper, excuse me. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Now, Athens is where? It's somewhere around where you have Greek, Rome, and all those places around there. This is out of Israel. You know, the Jews were scattered all over the world. So, in these countries were many Jews. And they were having synagogues. Last time I did explain to you that a synagogue is a house of worship. A Jewish house of worship is called a synagogue. Now, today you have uh, English calling it church. Yeah, so in English, when people congregate together to share the Gospels among themselves as brethren and sisters, you know, it is called a church. But with the Jews, it is called a synagogue. So the synagogues were implanted all over in these foreign countries by which Apostle Paul would go. And you know something? It is where he met steep oppositions from his fellow Jews because they knew of themselves that they were not in peace with him because of the activities he carried out against his fellow brethren and against the teachings of the Lord. So we move on to verse number two and found a certain Jew named Aquila born in Pontius lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. So you see Emperor Claudius commanded that all Jews quit Rome. Hallelujah. Why did he say that? The Bible does not explain why Claudius demanded that all the Jews depart from Rome. Hallelujah. Now, but Rome uh, had a great deal to know about the scriptures because the Jews also dwelt therein. So when many of you talk about Rome with regards to the Catholic Church, you begin to understand how it came to pass that the Romans were much versed with the things of the scriptures. And that is why they had their own church called the Catholic Church. And what is the meaning of Catholic? General Church, general, general. Every tongue and kindred is free to worship and learn the things of God in the Catholic Church. So Catholic simply means general, general. It's a general church indiscriminate of religion, sex, and ethnicity. That is the meaning of Catholic. Three, and because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and taught and wrought for their occupation, for they were tent makers. Yes, Paul was a tent maker. He was a craftsman. Therefore, he built tents and made his living by it. He would construct tents and sell them and out of which he made his living. And that is why Apostle Paul never at any time was telling the people to make offerings and whatever for him to sustain life. And this is where I begin to exhort many men of God who are teaching the scriptures 
that it is not only through the church that you will be able to make a living, else you will be a lazy person. Else you will be a lazy person. And you know, laziness is of the devil. God is not lazy. He works day and night, incessantly. So if you are a real born of God and you are a real man of God, you will not depend solely on the monies which are put in the church coffers to develop the word of God or to move further in the world. But you have to do certain things like farming in order to have your harvest through it. You can not only be blessed by the people, but God blesses you in diverse ways, in different ways. You may have a pig sty, and God will bless you for it by protecting your swine, and uh, they will get more of them, and you can also keep other uh, beasts uh, that you can grow up, cattle and so on, and God will bless you for them. You can equally become a farmer having huge plantations, and there also God will bless you for it. So it is wrong practice for men of God to think that it is only what is put on the altar by the congregants that they can make a living. This is very bad. And that is why I have seen in many churches, those who are teaching the gospel are very, very lazy. And now when people come to put money on the altar, on the offering purse, their necks are so big to swallow it quickly. And that is why today you have a great deal of upheavals among Christians in various churches, especially in Cameroon, where you have some embezzlers of church funds. Some of them go and buy a car at 60 million and have taxis on the way, simply because they being pastors, they were exhorted to certain high offices in the church. And then they became great thieves within the church periphery. Hallelujah. This is unwanted. You see, this is indiscipline at the hierarchy of the ministry. Hallelujah. And before the people, you appear to be so clean, so good, so nice, so holy. But inwardly and secretly, you are rotten. You are rotten from within, given the activities that you carry out openly and at night, even with the finances which congregants put to make the work of God grow. You transform it into your personal possessions and you begin to buy things to make yourself look very, very grandiose. Personal aggrandizement, which makes you move into pride. Hey, hello, you listen to me. Many of you are men of God out there, you know what I'm talking about. God is not happy with you. I need to tell you this, God is not happy with you at all. And many of you who sit on the pulpit, and when there is time for offering, you yourselves don't get down from the pulpit to put a dime in the offering purse, which is also very, very wrong. I'm here to castigate those wrongs. That is my mission. That is my mission. The Lord gave me the mission to, cast, to castigate wrongs which certain fellows of the household of, of God do. It is wrong. You don't give anything, but the poor congregants give the money and you transform it into your personal pockets and you use it for your personal gains which is wrong, thereby leaving uh, the young and the old congregants in total despair. And they begin to talk ill of you, and they begin to write letters against you, subdividing them to many nations in the world, castigating your attitude. You need to change this. You see, because uh, my Bible taught me that what men say, heaven will say it. What men bind, heaven will bind it. What men lose, heaven will lose it. So therefore, if the people keep on castigating you before the eyes of the people, giving you a greed for money, the Lord also castigates you. Seven, and he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justus, one that worshipped God, whose house joined heart in the synagogue. 
Now herein, there is something which, just as I would understand, he did. He alone and his wife did not go to church. His household, which means his children, his grandchildren and whatsoever, were in his house, they enjoined themselves into the synagogue. Now, but what do we find today? Many parents go to churches keeping behind their siblings, which is not acceptable. It is not acceptable at all. You go to church, mama, you go to church. Papa, you go to church. You keep your children at home. It is not acceptable. It is not correct. Jesus does not like that. You need to make sure that the children also go to church and they attend what we call Sunday school. You know, when you start teaching your little child the word of God, even if he were old or she were old, she will not, I repeat, not depart from it. But when you leave your children back at home, they begin to do things which are unholy. And they begin to meet friends that will lead them into doing things which will destroy their character, their characters, and hence they become thieves and banger smokers, marijuana smokers, and the dealers of cocaine, heroin, and all the, the likes, which destroy their lives, and some of them become insane because of those drugs. Parents, do you hear me? Parents, are you listening to me? I'm talking to you, parents. You don't need to keep your children at home when you are congregating, you are congregating in the church. Yes, you not need to. Eight, and Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord and all his house. And many of, uh, many of the Corinthians heard believed and were also baptized so after you should have heard the word of god you need to be baptized the baptism of repentance john's baptism hallelujah but the last time i did exhort you to understanding that that is not the only baptism that you sons of god or children of god you need after the baptism of immersion not sprinkling, because sprinkling, uh, though we call it baptism, I call it blessing, but you need to be baptized by immersion as Jesus was baptized and as John the Baptist did baptize people and the disciples of Jesus also did baptize pe people. Take note that Jesus never, ever dipped any person into the water to baptize him. Take note of that. And therefore, his own baptism was carried out in the book of Acts chapter number 2 through the fire baptism by planting onto the apostles the Holy Spirit on their heads by tongues of fire. Nine, then speak the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak, and hold not thy peace. I am not afraid. I speak like Paul, and I will not hold my peace. What does this mean? The Lord came in a night dream and spoke to Paul, saying, even though... You've been to many other cities and you were molested and they threatened your life and beat you up. But don't relent a dime of your minute from teaching the gospel. For I, Lord Jesus, am with you. I, the Lord Jesus, am with you. So therefore, fear not. Move on boldly and expound on the message which I have asked you to do. And... Uh, Talk peace unto them. Preach the message. Let them understand. 10. For I am with thee. No man shall set on thee to help thee. For I have much people in this city. What does that mean? In that city, the Lord Jesus was much thought. And people became much aware of his doctrines. That is why Jesus said to Paul, the people here are many that are aware of the scriptures and they follow it. So do not be afraid. Here you will not be molested. Here you will not be hurt. Here you will not be blasphemed. Here people will not threaten you in any way. <clears throat> because the people there are one with you through the scriptures. Now let us look at this here. There are countries where the word of God has not reached. Also, in this area, the word of God reached them. And that is the problem we have today. 
Many, many people say the end of the world has come. Order. Me, I know that Jesus said that until his word is preached to the nooks and crannies of the whole world, he is not coming. Right now, there are nations in the world that have not yet known about Jesus Christ, that have even rejected Jesus Christ, that do not want to see the Bible, that do not want to know anything about the scriptures in the Bible. There are many nations. If you go to the Middle East, you find many nations there. If you go to China, you find many nations there. Especially in Asia, many nations there kick against the scriptures. Hallelujah. So the Lord said, until the scriptures are preached unto the whole world, <coughs> his coming is not going to be effected. <coughs> so Paul remained there uh, for a length of time, teaching the scriptures with them and uh, exhorting them in the word of the Lord. 12. And when Gallio was the deputy of Archia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat. The Jews in certain city of Archia were against Paul. You know why? These Jews that were against Paul, some of them were versed but in the Pentateuch, which is also called the Torah, which is also known as the five books of Moses from uh, uh, Genesis to Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. From Genesis to Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. So these are the people who knew the things of the law. You see, so when Apostle Paul came and he was preaching certain things which were not in alignment, which were not in resonance, which were not in, una, in unison with what the law taught, the taught Paul was about to do blasphemy and therefore dis, they disregarded his teachings and not recommended his teachings at all. And that is why they made an insurrection against Paul. And in 13, saying this fellow persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. They knew that they were worshiping God, but the law here is referred to the Torah, the Pentateuch, or the first five books of Moses, which God inspired him to write, even from Mount Sinai, as he went there and delayed several days. Hallelujah. 14, and when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said unto the Jews, Gallio said to the Jews what? Hey, you Jews, you are bringing this man unto me that he is a criminal. What offense has he done? So then, let us see, Gallio said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O you Jews, reason, would that I should bear with you? He said, If it were a matter of evil that Paul had done, he, Galileo, will reason with them to punish Paul. But he did not find anything which was a matter of crime that he could punish Paul for. And 15, but if it be a question of words and names of your law, look into it yourselves. You see, Galileo referred them back to the Pentateuch. He said, you have the Pentateuch. You have read it. It is your scriptures, you as the Jews. Therefore, reason with Paul with regards to the Pentateuch, with regards to the five, five books of Moses, and reason with him in that direction, I am not a member of your Jewish teachings. Therefore, I, I would not handle the situation that you've brought before me. So he rejected them. He said, your plea before me, I will not take it at all. You reason with it according to your scriptures. 16. And he drove them from the judgment seat. So he drove the Jews away that were stunning to, to consent against Apostle Paul. 17, then the Greeks took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat, and Gallio cared for none of these. <coughs> you see? So the Jews took um, Sosthenes, who was the chief of the synagogues, and beat him before the presence of Gallio, and they departed. But Gallio did not bother at all because he did not share in the teachings of the Pentateuch. He said, this is not of my uh, own knowledge. I'm not a partisan to these teachings. Therefore, I will not do anything even if you beat your brother, sustainers of the synagogues. Hallelujah. 18 and Paul, after this, tarried there a good while and then took leave of the brethren and sailed to Syria 
uh, Priscilla and Aquila going with him. So he left them and went with Priscilla and Aquila for another journey and so on and so forth. 19. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with them. So he went also to these countries again that you've just learned here and started teaching the gospel and reasoning with them. What does that mean? When we read the scriptures, we need to meet other people who are much versed with the scriptures in order to reason with them. So do not just read the Bible and see you've understood, but you need to exchange your understandings with other people in order that you may be able to understand the things of the scriptures better. Hallelujah. So the Bible calls for when we teach, you can ask questions. You should have question and answer sessions so that more clarity is thrown onto the gospel for the people who are slow at understanding and for more who need to have more clarifications about the teachings of the gospel. Praise the living God. 20. When they desired him to tarry longer with them, <clears throat> he consented not. Many of them said, Oh, Paul, we love what you've been teaching and we acknowledge that you are a teacher sent of God. So be with us again for a while so that we enjoy your teachings of the gospel in Jesus. But Paul said, No, brethren, I wouldn't be with you this time, for I have to do what? 21. But he bid them farewell, saying, I must go to where? To Jerusalem. You know, they had this their feast uh, 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 of... Uh, of uh, 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 Passover, uh, the feast of uh, of uh, 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 the living bread and so on, and all those things. There are many feasts in Jerusalem uh, to commemorate the works of God in their lives. And therefore, Paul said, no, I must go uh, to Jerusalem to eat the feast of the Passover. Hallelujah. Many of you uh, wouldn't know the meaning of Passover, but some time ago, I did teach about it. You want to know about Passover? Okay. Uh, write an SMS to me asking what is the meaning of the feast of the Passover, and I will answer you verbatim. Hallelujah. 22. And when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. He returned to Antioch. This is the city where the followers of Jesus were first called Christians because in Antioch they saw that the disciples of Jesus who later on become, became apostles were having the characteristics of Jesus. They behaved like Jesus. They did all things the way Jesus would and therefore they were called Christians. Now let us look at one thing here today. Are we really Christians? I'm asking you who are watching me right now, are we really Christians? If truly we are Christians, what proofs do we have to show that we are Christians? Are our behaviors Christ-like? If our behaviors are Christ-like, then there will be no hatred among brethren. Hatred does not only come through um, wickedness or evil thinkings, but even those who proclaim the word of God to the public, who profess the word of God, exercise hate to their followers. What do I mean by that? By not using properly the forms allotted for church plans. Listen to me very carefully. <clears throat> if you love the congregants of your church, then the monies which they put for church buildings and for other matters of the church like paying of pastors and so on and so forth, you alone will not siphon these funds to enrich yourself for personal aggrandizement so that you are looked upon as a celebrity or you are looked upon as a very big man. Many of you are not Christians. 
Yes, you are not. We are not Christians. We should simply be known as disciples, followers of Jesus. But following our behaviors, following our behavioral patterns, we are disqualified from being called Christians. Nevertheless, it is a worldwide appellation which is already accepted and it cannot be reversed. But we carry out these names in vain. We carry out these titles in vain, total vain, because we have not stopped blackmailing, we have not stopped stealing, we have not stopped doing the things which are irrelevant before the sight of God and before the sight of Jesus Christ. We have not stopped them at all. We are still doing them and we exercise hate at the uppermost levels of the hierarchy of the church. You have heard that some pastors poison pastors. You have heard that some men of God kill other men of God. Some men of God do a lot of grievous things that vex Jesus Christ. I'm here to point out these things to you if you've never known them. And if you want to stand against me, face Jesus Christ because heaven and I, we are majority. You can't defeat us at all. In no circumstance. These things that we are doing are the higher levels of, this, of, the, of, the, of the church uh, uh, organs make us totally non-Christians at all. We are non-Christians at all. Yes, we put on good apparel to appear before the people that we are real men of God. We speak good English. We, we, we quote the Bible very well. But deep in us, Christ is null and void. And we don't have a place of Christ in us. You are teachers of the gospel. What I'm saying here is that I'm not judging you. But look upon yourselves on to see whether you are a Christian. Let's examine ourselves. Are we really Christians? with these behavioral patterns that we are exhibiting to the congregants. We are not Christians at all. Yes. So, that is it for us in Antioch 23. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Phrygia in order to strengthen the disciples. So, as a church planter, he went to Galatia, Phrygia, and so on, repeating the teachings that he has left unto them so that they will not change and follow up vain doctrines, vain teachings, which will not take them to anywhere. As Apostle Paul was a church planter, he will revive the people again and again, strengthening them in the things of the Lord. 24, and a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. Apollos was born in Alexandria. Now, geographically, the question is, where is Alexandria? Alexandria is in Egypt. Alexandria is one of the cities in Egypt. It is a very big city in Egypt. <coughs> Wherein Apollos was born, and he learned the things of God in Egypt. You see, Egypt knows Jesus Christ very well. Egypt knows Jesus Christ very well. Many Egyptians are versed with the things of God, and you have many Christian churches in Egypt. You can now see. You remember when uh, uh, Herod was about to kill Jesus, and the angel of the Lord, even Gabriel, went on to Joseph and made him understand what was the secret of Herod against Jesus in a vision and told him to carry the baby Jesus down to Egypt for he will be killed. So Joseph and Mary took the camel and moved down to Egypt to save the life of baby Jesus. And there are many things that happen in Egypt which scripturally in this Bible are not written. There are great miracles that Mary, the mother of Jesus, did 
There are great miracles that baby Jesus did hmm, that if I should begin to tell you these things, we may not leave this teaching today. We shall have to spend almost a whole day because of that. So therefore, that is it. So Alexandria is a city in that. And 25, this man was very much versed with the things of Jesus, but he was only versed with the baptism of John. That is how the churches also are today. They have only the baptism of John. Come and be baptized. 26, and he began to speak boldly in the synagogue who went Aquila and Priscilla ahead of it. And they said, oh yes, so Priscilla and Aquila were more vested in the things of the scriptures more than him. And so they called him by the side and said, okay, there are certain areas that you teach, but you were not much versed with them. So let us give you more clarifications unto them by the grace of God. Hallelujah. So teaching the scriptures is a grace. Not everyone has the grace to teach the scriptures well. Not everyone. Hallelujah. So it's a special grace for someone to teach the scriptures well. 28. For he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. So this man was born in Alexandria went again to these cities and taught the things of God, making many of the Jews believe that Jesus is the Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you can now see that um, that is the word of God which you have had this morning, and I wish to praise the Lord for it. While I will be cutting off a few minutes to breathe a little and return, therefore keep up until I come back. <laughs>